Well, what's up, everybody? It's Carpo here, and uh, I've come to present you some information that I came across that I found fantastic. And uh, really, um, sometimes you come across things that just really hit home. I read some very, you know, a few scientific articles about it, and I was going to try to read one of the articles or something in a video, but it. it, it so many of the things are so technical, it becomes an issue uh, <laughs> that a lot of people just don't want to do the research. So I'm here to try to consolidate some of these ideas uh, about light and about us being light beings. Now, when you hear that term light beings and light workers, a lot of people cringe and uh, instantly think, cheesy, cheesy, it sounds new agey. And it is, and I feel the same way. But I understand, and I've always understood, that these people really are working with energies quite often. So the thing is to distinguish the ones who understand how to harness that energy and the ones who are just trying to make a buck. But beyond all that, and beyond the fraudsters, there are people who can work with energy. The question really becomes, do they know what they're working with? And that's how I feel about channelers, as they're channeling archetypes and ideas in their own subconscious Quite often, I don't buy what they're selling, you know, so to speak, even if they're not selling anything, metaphorically. Um, so I have, you know, some very uh, interesting research that I was doing on plants and how they absorb UV. It's um, plants have these special. Uh, basically, when a plant absorbs ultraviolet light, it's necessary. It helps. Uh, uh, I was researching cannabis plant because I wanted to know is UV light important? Because ultraviolet is just out of the spectrum of our visual, you know. But still, infrared and ultraviolet are still there and they're utilized by animals and by plants, of course. So my research led me to they were showing how roots could communicate through plants, but if they were in quartz pots, they, they could communicate. But if they were in glass pots they couldn't because the light was blocked and the crystal didn't block the UV light and uh, it, it kind of you know confirmed my suspicions that plants utilize UV well in a long complicated process basically the cannabis plant when it's hit with UV light um, in the 300 something range 300 nanometers or whatever wavelength it triggers more THC production more resin production because it helps the, to protect the flower from the sun's rays. Okay, it makes total sense, right? I won't get into the science of that because that research took me to something even fucking cooler. Um, uh, I'd done research a while back on this whole idea that light could transmit information, and they did an experiment where they shined a light through a duck embryo or through a duck into a chicken into you threw a duck into chicken eggs or something like that and they were able to basically have you know uh, chickens that were born with webbed feet like ducks uh, eighty percent of them had some sort of a duck like feature even though they were never touching uh, there was another experiment where they had two sealed jars and they were able to transfer a virus from one container to another through a sealed window in a sealed room okay now listen this is like it's like a virus transfer and, and what it does is it builds its own superstructure. The energy from the light, whichever wavelength it may be, uh, creates a structure. It basically replicates itself through light. So imagine sitting next to someone and the sunlight that's passing through them is getting you sick because their DNA is affecting your DNA just by being there. Now stick with me, this gets fun. I've got a few notes here so I don't forget. Uh, the surface cells. Uh, you know, like on our skin, they, they believe that they trap and store UV light, like a battery. Our cells, the DNA in our cells more specifically, trap this UV light. And uh, they, they trap these photons and utilize them as we need them, like a battery. And the skin cells can trap them, and basically, kind of like a battery, we know that the human body is somewhat like a battery, but only recently have they been able to uh, actually understand how this thing works. Um, they've been able to destroy 99% of a cell with UV light, including destroying all the DNA. And they have what they call, um, what's it, I wrote it down, phototherapy or, or uh, oh gosh, 
darn it, can't remember, uh, photon storage, no, what are they, oh, photo repair, okay, and they've known this for a long time, they don't understand how it works, uh, if you bombard something with UV light and destroy the cell 99% of it, including the DNA, it will repair itself if you use the same frequency, the same wavelength, rather, uh, at a, to a lesser degree. It will build itself back completely in one day. Okay? So, I really got into this and I took too many notes. Um, <laughs> Basically, what's happening in here is that um, we, let me see, I want to make sure I do this in order because this is important. Um, Biophotons, or bioluminescence, you know, everybody's heard about that, how animals have that. Well, this is similar to that, except it's different. The cell, what they're finding is that the, gene, the, the genes themselves, as they unravel, and they actually transmit light. So it's visual, visible light. They're not transmitting just frequencies when people talk about us being light beings. All the information that's sent through the body, we're always told that they're chemical signals. Every one of us is, you know, who's looked into this knows that it's kind of a scientific jargon you know, type. They, they haven't quite been able to explain what, what is a chemical process, right? I mean, how does the body react so quickly? Um, and it's through light, through photons. These photons are stored until they're needed for energy. And they think of them as kind of like laser-like, if as they were trying to explain it. Um, so this UV light is utilized by our body. Now this can explain why in the winter time people get the blues. They need a recharge and whatnot. It's a literal, you know, uh, thing. So, uh, you know, they were thinking that our junk DNA, or what they used to think of junk DNA, is more like photon storage. Uh, a way for our body to, uh, it, it also runs other components of the body, but part of it could be a way to store that energy in order to utilize it when the cell needs it. Um, they call it wave genetics, I believe there's a thing uh, I wrote down here, but um, let's see, what else was there? <laughs> oh, they said uh, one expl explanation for the vision when you close your eyes and you still see the object, uh, they call it negative, it's a negative after image. And they think it may be delayed bioluminescence. Like, all of the cells in our body trap photons, and we're all light. We are light, right? And you hear that all the time, especially in a lot of the New Age things. But when you hear it, it just sounds cheesy as hell, at least to me, because it's like, okay, so what does this mean, you know? And being a skept rational, skeptical mystic, in a way, I, I try to really get into the scientific reasoning behind this and say, okay, so I believe this is possible. Show me what it is and show me how it works. Not that science is infallible by any means, uh, but if I read enough about something and, and, and you know, hear it enough times, you know, it makes sense. Um, it can put together a lot of things that we otherwise didn't know. Um, it also explains the aura. People who are more sensitive to these photons can see the aura of people. I've seen the aura of trees at certain times, and I always thought maybe it was just some sort of a trick of light, but over the years it happens at certain times, especially when I'm in a certain mood, you know, and if I'm focused, especially in a meditative state. Um, but some people are more susceptible to seeing these auras of people. So this bio uh, energy that we create, you know, is actually visible. They're creating instruments. They've been able to start photographing it. I believe that Curlian photography is the same thing. It's the ph photography of the aura. But I think that that's the bio, you know, feedback that they're taking pictures of. In fact, they've taken branches of a tree and photographed them under this, or it photographs the aura of the plant. Then they cut off part of it and take a picture again. And it has a residual effect. Just like phantom limb, when people can still feel their arm being there after it gets chopped off or whatever. Um, it's an amazing thing because it's almost like the energy center is not disturbed, but the material part of it is. It's pretty amazing stuff. Um, they did all these experiments with different uh, herbs that were supposedly supposed to cure cancer because they think this could be the potential because uh, cancer cells have a different bio uh, energy, whatever the <laughs> bio photon, different look to it. And uh, so they can detect this and find plants that maybe can correct this. 
And they said mistletoe extract has been the only one that's been shown to actually change and work for certain cancer people who have tried it. Um, my whole reason for doing this is basically that right there in a nutshell. I want to educate people on the idea that we're light only because if we can use that to heal people, I think that that's majorly important. And I hate cancer. You know, I think it's a simple thing to fix. And I think that we're on the verge of discovering the simplicity of cancer. Because cancer is a condition, it's a societal condition that's caused by uh, many different factors can cause cancer. But it's, it's your cells are unable to destroy themselves because they don't have the proper information. This is why cannabis has been shown, the CBD informs the cell that it's okay, you need to kill yourself. And reprograms it in a way. And uh, I think it's fantastic, all these discoveries about light, because light therapy is going to become pretty prevalent in the future, I'm sure. Um, and I've always known that this was true, you know, that we needed these waves, but it's not a, uh, uh, damn phones, you know, I hate it when they, when I forget to leave my phone in the house, I really don't like phones at all, so I'm trying to wave down, um, I'm almost done anyway, whatever, what else did I write down here, yeah, um, as far as the notes I took, uh, well, I wrote down this note, it's totally separate, but I want to kind of throw it in since I won't make a video about this, but uh, uh, there's this old theory, this old seven rays theory, you know, people who have studied occult, Blavatsky, stuff like that, know about the seven rays, but the idea is that they bounce off of the sun, that the sun is like a filter for the larger energies, and so therefore these energies that are charging the sun, whatever they may be, create this, it's kind of like Helios and the shield of Helios, which is a story where uh, the sun is Helios and the sun reflects the light, the light of God, if you will, off of the sun to us. We get the secondary look. Everything is light and electromagnetism. Uh, this is why it's fantastic. We see the links between magnetism and electricity. And in fact, you know, I've seen the, the experiments they've done with Electri electrical arcs where they've used magnets to actually twist and turn uh, light. Light bends. Light is not uh, a constant as people think. It can be affected by invisible forces like magnetism. And then, But of course we know it can be affected by gravity. But that's the whole point. Gravity and magnetism are tied in. We have the toroidal field and all these different things to learn about. It's a fantastic world. But this to me, this photon idea, is probably the most important thing that I've learned in the last few months at least uh, that's really going to tie together a lot of the things that I've been researching. And it totally, it's something that I've kind of inherently felt that like, because I've, I've contemplated this, how do our cells communicate so fast? Uh, one of the questions that baffles scientists is, how do the molecules arrange, know how to arrange themselves within a cell and a structure and then keep there and stay there and do their job? Once the cell is functioning, it just knows what to do, of course. We understand stem cells. You introduce them and they can, you know, take on a role. Like worker bees, but worker cells. But uh, they're the root, you know. But what is a cell? A cell is a bunch of, tons of proteins. And uh, but you break it down and it's still molecules, which are atoms, and somehow those atoms have to arrange into molecules, and those molecules into compounds and create these structures. And it's utterly amazing to me that any of it exists, and the way it works is beyond comprehension. So when you, next time you think, oh, I'm just a bag of meat, you know, with the with the spirit inside or whatnot think about it differently, uh, you're a bag of light because all of your flesh is light. All organic matter has light flowing through it. So your body is a very important vessel, but honestly they did research and found out, they, I mean this is like, you know, breaking stuff because uh, they were able to run an electrode sensor up someone's back and around their whole body and, and, and detect the points, the acupuncture points that the Chinese consider to be the chi, the energy field, and there are these acupuncture points. Acupuncture works, I've had it done. So why does it work? I don't know, I've always wondered. I've been trying to study and figure it out, and I had my own theory, but uh, they are these points of these currents, these photons, so it's light, it's literal light. And the thing is, it, 
light is just a wavelength that we can see within this huge spectrum. The, but these pho, these are emitting photons, real light, visible light. This isn't infrared or UV, but it's visible light. And only small things can detect it, unless, of course, you have an aura. But the vibes that we put off are real, you know, and the experiences that we have are real. We're one and the same. Now, the reason why we are the sun and the sun is us is because of that. We're exchanging photons constantly. When you eat food, you're storing those photons and you're using that energy that the plant has caught and converted and trapped. Everything is light. And this is why it's such an obvious, important thing. Long-winded, I know, but um, I think that this might lead to a change in perception if mainstream science can get off their ass, because this is not, this is a metaphysical issue. This confirms many homeopathic and Eastern uh, philosophies on health and well-being, because also what this means is they're finding conscious that they believe that possibly these, you know, dendritic pathways of our neurons may actually, they have these little structures within them which resemble light tubes and they think that this light may be how our consciousness operates. Some guys said that it might actually explain our consciousness to the extent of trying to contain it and still explain it to a body. It doesn't work for me. I know that it's something bigger. I feel that our consciousness is bigger, but it's the way that it operates. Uh, they were explaining how these photons are able to use... It's, it's like quantum computing. It's just... It's amazing stuff. So I'm going to put a couple of links up, and uh, hopefully you'll check them out. It gives kind of a taste of it. There's tons more scientific jargon that you can get into, and it's a fantastic subject I plan to do a lot more research on. So take care, everybody, and I hope you have a good day.